Tonight is very much a discussion of fundamentals. And fundamentals when we talk about display means we have to break down each type of display and understand it, what it is we are talking about. Because even in the context of traditional bonsai, there are multiple forms of display, right? There is the Kok Fu exhibition, which is a singular unit of display that has been duplicated across the world. Whether you go to the national show, whether you go to the trophy in Europe, uh, whether you go to Salyu in France, whether you go to uh, an exhibition in uh, Australia or South Africa, the Kokfu model of display, the show model of display as it is defined by the national show in Japan occurs at the National Museum of Art in Ueno Park in Tokyo every single year. February now, uh, I, I believe it's moved. No, it is still in late February. Sorry, the trophy moved to early March to avoid overlapping. Um, that has really formulated our concept of what display is. But here's the interesting thing. If you go to the Taikon 10 in Japan in November, you're going to see tokonoma spaces, where all of a sudden you have an alcove display. You're going to see the use of scrolls in the, uh, in the Taikon 10 in November, whereas in the Kokufu, you typically don't. Typically don't. I have seen it periodically, but it is not the standard for show display. And you're going to see in that Taikon 10 space, the alcove space, which is a lower height, which is a bigger space, and which gives rise to the capacity to create a little bit more context, okay? Those displays, the alcove, the tokonoma display, the utilization of a scroll, uh, and more innovative approaches to display, um, as well as the smaller forms of dis display in terms of the chuhin and the shohin, we are gonna come back and we're gonna address those specifically because each of those has to have a significant amount of discussion around it to fully understand what the hell are we doing, right? And so tonight, we are focused strictly and solely on the most common fundamental form of show display as it is taken from the Kokufu model and as it has been utilized to a large degree bastardized and to, to an even greater degree dismantled into a very tacky rendition of the very simple beauty of show display as it occurs in Japan. And we have to start here in display in order to be able to innovate outside of Japan and start to evolve display as our own means of expression. And so let's understand the fundamentals together, okay? All right, so when we dive into this, I'm gonna take this slow. I've got several things prepared behind us. We're gonna move the whiteboard. We're gonna get to see it, but I wanna break the information down cleanly and succinctly, all right? First and foremost, when we talk about display, we need to understand the size to understand the elements that go into the fundamental form of display. As I mentioned, we will come back to Chuhin, we will come back to Shohin, but what we really want to talk about tonight are Omono displays. These are displays of larger size trees. Uh, still potentially a single person tree, but trees that exceed sort of that 18 inch, 10 to 18 inch Chuhin mark, two to six inch Shohin mark, when we get above that, we get into that 30 to 48 inch realm, we get into Omono bonsai. And there is a reason when you go to the Kokufu, why all of the Omono trees are all in that lower section where you go up to that second level and you see the Chuhin, you see the Shohin, right? And you have a few of those intermixed spaces where there's a block of Shohin or a block of Chuhin with the Omono, but the Omono themselves carry so much visual weight. And you see in the Omono display, the variation of height down the aisles, the intermixing of conifer deciduous, broadleaf, conifer deciduous, conifer, broadleaf, that height, that intermixing of species. This is display layout. We will come back to that and show organization at another time as well. This is a big genre. Let's first just understand that we're discussing Omono. Now inside of this, you might be looking at the Chuhin, 10 to 18 inches. And you might be saying 10 to 18 inches and Omono's 30 to 48 inches. Well, what about 18 to 30 inches? Yes, this is interesting. Let's focus here. 
Chuhin, 10 to 18 inches. Shohin, 2 to 6 inches. What about the 6 to 10 inches? Yes, this is also interesting, right? Because we get these gaps in between what is a true Shohin, what is a true Chuhin, right? There's a size difference there. It's called Kifu Bonsai. And when you look at the commercial marketability of Bonsai in Japan, Kifu Bonsai, because they do not clearly fit into Shohin and they do not have the scale to represent themselves as an independent tree as Chuhin, become very difficult trees to fit into the traditional functional show model. They have a lower price tag as a result of their lack of ability to really find their way easily into the Kokufu exhibition, and consequently it tends to be a relatively forgotten about size of tree. Just the same, when you exceed that Chuhin size, 10 to 18 inches, when you get into that 20, 22, 24 inch range, you are not powerful enough at that height to really give the kind of scale that fits into that omono section of that fundamental exhibition that has formed the framework for our understanding. And again, we see, much like the Kifu, we see that intermediate area, area there, too big to be chewing, too small to be a real dominant omono tree, and all of a sudden the price tag is lower, the tree has a much harder time, if any chance at all, of getting accepted into the Kokufu. And this is where we see these wheelhouse ranges form for the fundamental methodology of display as it is taken from the Kokufu model to kind of form the framework for our expectation of size. Now does this mean a tree that is 6 to 10 inches doesn't have value in the West? Does it mean that a tree that's 20 inches to 30 inches doesn't have value? No, because we don't have to abide by that. But we do need to understand that methodology and how that forms the framework of this sample that's being utilized across the world if we ever want to move past it find new ways of displaying or have the capacity via display to give context to our creation and what we hope it communicates, okay? So size is a big one. And here is why size becomes a big one. Because when we start to talk about display as a larger contextual discussion, this is our moment to communicate, right? And if we had to rank in priority our capacity or our list of priorities from top to bottom in display that we want to consider. Number one is context. Now, I feel context is the most important thing that we start to discuss in display. What is it we are trying to say? What elements are serving in that dialogue? How are we utilizing the components to drive forward that message? Are we even considering beyond the stand, the accent pieces, uh, the, the ceramic container that the tree is in? Are we even potentially considering the architectural space? I would like to say yes, it has been done. We've taken part in it. Peter Warren has, has uh, you know, kind of opened the doors in, the, in Europe to, to some of these creative utilizations. You've seen Francois Jacquer. You've seen Mario Comstaw in some of the exhibitions in Spain. We've seen Walter Paul in Germany, right? There, there is a definitive quest for contextual represent, representation. Uh, Andrea, who we podcasted with in the Czech, you know, like there's, there's interesting capacities to utilize. If we don't understand the fundamental foundation, it is very hard to break into that context, okay? And so when we speak tonight, the context of our discussion tonight is Ueno Museum fundamental show display of Omono Bonsai, all right? And when we start to look at that, and we take context off of the board because we understand the fundamentals of that, the number one priority in display is height, height presentation height of the tree. This forms the entire focal point of how we choose the elements that engage with our tree. Now we're talking O Mono Bonsai. So when we start talking about big trees, we definitely tend to start talking about slightly lower stands or stands that potentially even form a surface between the table and where, where the tree exists, right? But, but we have to be thinking in that surface, okay, I'm gonna have a surface that this tree is gonna sit on. Height is my priority. If height is my priority, how do I make that determination? Well, this is when we get into the greater depths because when we're looking at a tree, we have to understand the space in which the tree is going to be viewed, and we have to understand the distance from which it's going to be possible to view the tree, and we have to understand the table height that we're starting with to be able to formulate our concept of height. Now, when we would select stands for trees for the 
uh, going into the Kokufu, those stands for that tree in the Kokufu exhibition were going to be different than the stand that that exact same tree would sit on if it were going to the Taikon 10. Why would that be? Well, the tables at the Kokufu were significantly higher than the tables at the Taikon 10. And so all of a sudden, if you're saying, listen, in Japan, in Japan, at the standard traditional height, you have roughly a seven to eight foot space right here, all right? Four feet for this aisle, four feet for this aisle. If you've ever been to the Kokufu, people are very, very close together. And you start to say from a close proximity with an inability to step back, when somebody is looking at your tree and you have a backdrop right here, you want them to be looking level with the, the upper branches of your canopy down on the majority and never capable of seeing up into the undercarriage of the physical man-made work, right? So we're looking at the upper branches of the apex, not the peak. We're looking at the upper branches of the apex. We're looking down on the middle branches. We've got a, a lower perspective. We see the base, we see the pot, we see the surface, okay? from a close perspective. Now, obviously, the farther away you stand, you get to see a lot more of that tree, and that could allow you to elevate that tree further, greater distance, greater height, to get into the range where we're seeing up into the lowest branches of our upper canopy at the eye level. When we look at that canopy, technically, we're looking up at it, but we're seeing the apex. We can't see the undercarriage, right? So we're at that level with the lowest branches of our apical region. We're starting to look slightly down on the middle, down a little bit more at the lowest. We see the pot, we see the base, we see the table, we see the surface. That is how the Kokufu model is built in terms of the height that we want to be presenting a tree at. Now, when we look at the national show, we're talking about a standard card table. Just under 30 inches of display height is the beginning surface for us to start to accommodate the height of stand that's gonna hold our tree. Again, when we talk Omono Bonsai, <clears throat> we're talking about a little bit lower stand. But when we start to talk about smaller trees, there's a reason that we start to have these longer legs on smaller trees. We need to elevate them to that height. We will come back to Chuhin and Shohin. I wanna to continue to reiterate, but our priority first when we begin to conceptualize display, when we select a stand, when we think about the elements, we utilize the height of the tree and we consider how tall is the surface we will be displaying on and how much distance do we have the capacity to step back to be able to create the best possible experience for somebody viewing our tree in the show presentation model, all right? So height forms so much of what we do. It forms the stand, it informs via that stand the accent piece. And let's just talk really quickly about the elements. Because when we start to talk about the elements of display, typically in the Omono, large tree form of display, we have the tree, we obviously have the pot, we have the stand, and we also have an accent piece as well as whatever the surface that that accent piece is sitting on. These are our fundamental elements of display. When we start to talk about this then, and we say, listen, first priority in this, because context is created to give the best impression of that tree, we're not necessarily talking about seasonality, although seasonality can be represented in the accent piece. We're not necessarily talking about a type of wood of the stand that's gonna hint at some dialogue with the tree. This isn't necessarily that moment for that deep contextual discussion. We are trying to tap into making that tree look the very best, powerful, presentable it possibly can. Okay? And that height is where that gets accomplished. So we see the height of that stand to elevate us to be visibly seeing that portion at level, seeing slightly down on this portion here, a little bit more down here, getting a view of that base representing that container and seeing that surface under the stand. But it also impacts our accent piece because when we typically see an accent piece that we feel fits with that presentation, Rarely is that accent piece very massive in relation to the tree, and rarely is that accent piece taller than the height of that stand, 
Rarely, right? Now, there are obvious exceptions in Omono because you have a very tall tree and maybe it's sitting on a slab and now we do have a more vertical accent piece that is taller than the surface that the tree sits on. But outside of that exception, rarely is the accent piece taller than the slab if it is going to visually, or uh, taller than the stand, if it is going to visually work inside of that uh, composition and the context of fundamental show display, okay? So that height, that we're trying to aspire to, if you don't know what table height you're starting from, if you don't know the viewing distance that you can stand, then we are really handicapped, right? And obviously this is systematized in Japan and it's been rerun and rerun and rerun, but then you go to a Western show in, in Europe or North America or, uh, or um, Canada or Australia, and, and it's always different. And consequently, we put out a stand and we say, well, this is what I had. It's what I had, you know, and it's like, yeah, okay, well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but when we start to talk about breaking down the elements and understanding fundamental display and improving it, these are the areas that we understand maybe as show organizers, as club uh, presidents, as uh, people that are striving to see our own bonsai approach or the bonsai approach of our community around us elevate. Oh, here's one way we can do it systematize the height or at least educate people so that the people that do choose to do this intentionally can make that decision, okay? So we've talked about height. Now, when we start to choose the accent piece, because we have three primary components, tree, stand, accent, right? When we start to talk about Omono display, the visual mass becomes the next real focus of the subject matter. Visual mass also plays into the selection of stand. Visual mass plays into the selection of the accent piece. Because if we have this big, powerful tree and we put it on this really light, delicate stand, automatically in terms of that display, the context is make this tree look as visibly pleasing as possible. That's the context of the fundamental Kokufu show model display. Make it look amazing. And if you're gonna do that, you shouldn't have people looking at the stand to wonder, is this stand gonna hold up for the entire seven days this tree is in this show? Like, feels like it's gonna break. If that's the, uh, the interpretation that we're giving, then maybe we fail in terms of that model. Now, are there moments where you want to push that boundary? Probably, contextually, it would probably require a different exhibition. It would probably require a different intention. Again, that's all out there. Let's understand the fundamental visual mass. Now, how do you accomplish visual mass in the stand? This is actually what we need to understand. And there are two major areas where we accomplish visual mass in the stand. Number one, thickness of legs, okay? The legs, the, the, the pieces that support that composition. When we start to get these dainty little legs and a really, really thin piece of wood on the top and you just put this powerhouse of a tree on this, right? all of a sudden, the visual stability of that composition does not hold water to the weight that the tree is imposing upon that stand. Now, we know wood is strong. We know that stand realistically can hold that tree. That doesn't mean it visually stands up. Okay, so the thickness of these legs, all of a sudden we start beefing up the thickness of these legs and it starts to give you a different impression of stability in terms of that tree's relationship with that stand. Okay, number two is thickness of the top or lack slash presence of space, okay? And this is where we can lighten or increase visual mass to say, I've got one small board width right here. And to say, oh, okay, what if I add another little piece right here? And it's like, oh, cool. What if I add even a little bit more mass right there? Oh, great, what if I add another thing that consumes negative space? Ooh, you just watch the stability of that surface as we chew up the negative space and we add more elements that occupy that space and shore up the relationship of our leg to that upper surface and the space that exists within the confines of that stand, we watch the stability of that stand increase. And inside of this, we're able to utilize elements from a very functional knowledge of display and execution of the display in this show context model to be able to start with height and with mass 
making the correct decisions about what stand could potentially work with a powerful tree or what stand might work better with a more of a delicate tree, okay? Now in terms of the progression of these priorities, in the fundamental model of display as it exists in the Kokfu, whoops, I eradicated Chuhin. Let me go back, okay? Once we've talked about height, once we've talked about stability and mass being proportional, appropriate, and presenting the tree in its best light, oftentimes we move directly into color, right? And color is such a big component of showing bonsai, both in container selection, as well as in how that relates to the stand, the accent, and the jita, or the surface that the accent piece typically sits on, okay? And when we talk about color, the most common discussion of color in Japan is that it should be a darker color, right? You don't want, and when we talk about dark versus light, two things here, dark suggests visual mass, dark suggests age, and dark typically does not demand a lot of visual attention or does not compete with the tree. Again, dark suggests mass, dark suggests age, and dark does not create visual competition with the tree. These are all good things if the tree is the focal point and the contextual representation of the display, right? Now, seasonally, we can go to lighter wood. A more delicate tree, we can use lighter wood, right? Because lighter wood suggests spring, suggests newness. Lighter wood suggests lightness, suggests delicacy. Lighter wood typically does have a more attention demanding component in the display that intentionally and contextually you can absolutely utilize as a tool. But in the fundamental model of the Kokufu occurring in February, the middle of winter, at a point where you're showing the tree at this height and this close proximity and competing with everybody else, believing in the homogenous approach, gone through the judging process to get to this point, that is not historically how it has been practiced practice. Consequently, this is the way display is typically bastardized around the world. And I say bastardized because we don't understand it. We just see it. We copy it, but we don't know these elements. Now you do. This is the point of this discussion. Okay. So color darker, oftentimes slightly brown, slightly beige or slightly reddish hue, right? And rosewood ultimately in the very beginning of, of stand creation, right? The bonsai stand in Japan was a writing table or it was a table to have tea at. It was never designed when the original stands were utilized. They were never specifically created for bonsai to set on them. Now, did, did Yuzon come along and start creating phenomenal stands, died as a pauper, and now his stands are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? Yes. Are there multiple stand makers of that caliber that came along and saw the ability to manipulate the stand into a beautiful work of art? Yes. Do we have an Austin Heitzman in North America who has found the ability to make the art of the stand as pivotal, if not, uh, you know, not more than, but maybe more than in some contextual displays, important than the bonsai itself? Yes, these people exist. This opportunity exists in the standard show model. That is not what the stand is there to do, okay? And that's where that rosewood color as a common wood source, hinting at that red, darker, deeper, older, and less visually demanding became a big component, all right? And last but not least, when we start to talk about display, we typically need to be very considerate of orientation because display in the standard show model originates and exists within a very small space. And if you've ever been to the Kokfu, you have this table here and it runs lengthwise and there are these bamboo tri uh, trios of bamboo pieces that form dividers from one seki or one space to another, right? And you've got this backdrop here, okay? And you've got a tree sitting here, the stand is, is, is here, right? And the tree is sitting here. The tree on the edge is always gonna face the interior of the display. The accent piece right here is going to exist and we're gonna talk about that accent piece, hopefully having some kind of orientation, high point here, uh, accent piece facing in, tree facing in, independent 
standalone self-feeding system of display on the edge of the display tree always leads into the aisle this is fundamental right so when we talk orientation orientation or asymmetrical flow to whatever slight or significant degree of the tree facing into the display asymmetrical display this uh, flow of the companion piece or accent facing back towards the tree now, when we talk about this, we also talk about orientation of the elements involved. Because when we have a stand here, if this is a rectangular stand, which a lot of the stands that exist in traditional display are, then we probably are not going to want a rectangular jita, jita, J-I-T-A, jita. That's what holds your accent piece and fundamental display. We're probably not gonna duplicate or want to duplicate, create repetition of that rectangular form in both the stand and the jita. So now we start to talk about, ooh, I've got a rectangular form of a stand. How about I go with a free form burl here? And that free form burl or that slab, or maybe we go with an oval, something that has directional asymmetrical generation of an orientation and direction also needs to be considered mixing up the elements varying the colors so that we don't get duplication, probably not having an accent piece in a rectangular pot if the tree's in a rectangular pot, right? All of these things that start to come about in the traditional display model that when the judges walk through the Coke Fu and select the show winning tree, the show winning tree at the Coke Fu is only selected after it is on display because the elements of the display have got to be to the level of a show winning tree or else, and I've been there for trees that were the best tree of that species that has ever been exhibited, and it still did not win a Kung Fu prize because every component of that display was not well thought out. And I have been a present and a judge at the trophy where the best tree did not win because every execution of the display was not to the level that it needed to be. And a lesser tree of a still of a high caliber, but with all of the totality of the display conceptualized and executed was the piece that won because of that thought and consideration. And this is why it's so important, okay? So just to recap, omono, functional, fundamental, bonsai design, we're talking about height. We're talking about mass. We're starting to talk about the other elements in terms of color orientation, right? We are now, right? And context was the beginning, but we recognize context here is already created for us. Do away with that. We'll come back to innovative displays. We are now in the wheelhouse of starting the process of setting up our display. I want to use this moment to kind of go through the display process and I, uh, you know, like I wanted to pick a really big, powerful pine. I re recognize there's some ambiguity here. Uh, asymmetrical flow is, is, is pushing to the right for anybody in question. I know the apex. I didn't have time to do all that. Anyways, cut me some slack here, right? Okay, so we have an old mono design we, uh, or display. We have a big, powerful tree, powerful tree, powerful trunk, right? The surface here, this is lower than our standard, just under, right, 29, 29 and a half inches standard card table as we would see at the national show. This is actually 26, 26, 25 maybe, four inches shy of what I would consider to be standard if I were displaying at the national show in Rochester, New York. And so when I start to look at this and I think about that perspective, automatically my eye level is at the top of this tree, which means when I stand presented with this tree, this lowest branch covers the entire base of the tree and the trunk. I have already lost in terms of the height, okay? So when we look at the slab as a display methodology, this is for very vertically tall trees. This is an abused, excuse me, this is an abused element of fundamental exhibition display in North America at least, but I would say it's an abused element across the world, right? I'm gonna have a slab, it's gonna be beautiful wood, it's gonna be live edge, I'm gonna be doing something artistic, or at least it's very safe, right? And, and inside of that, I'm, I should be okay. Ugh, let's get away from that. The moment to use a slab, literati. The moment to use a slab, elegant, really tall, beautiful piece. The moment to use a slab when we are tapping out that maximum 42, 46, 48 inches, 
Typically in the Kokfu, it stops right around 40. That 40 inch mark, we're saying, man, I gotta put a slab or else I'm gonna elevate this beyond the backdrop and no longer do I have a position in the show, okay? So just starting off, I'm already seeing that my height for this tree is not really compatible with a slab set uh, flush on that surface because height is our first priority, okay? Now my accent piece, very visually massive, very visually massive, right? The height of this is right up around the height of the tree. I don't want the, the grass or the accent piece to be tapping into any sort of interaction with the height of the tree. And in fact, when we talk about this accent piece, what was the purpose or is the purpose of the accent piece to insinuate season, to insinuate environment, or to insinuate some form of context that relates to the tree? right? That was the original intention. It has a dialogue. But when we go to the fundamental show display, as you see it in the Kok Fu, there's not a lot of grasses or stakusa that relates to the tree with any more context than the height, the mass, and the, that color and orientation. That is what dictates to the largest degree what stakusa are paired with what tree. It takes some of the romance out. I understand that. Great, let's blow up the romance right now. That model is not very thought-provoking compared to the Tokonoma display, display, some of the Taikon 10 exhibition pieces, or what we have the capacity to do when we understand this context further, okay? And again, we've got a very big jita underneath this shtakusa, but that jita being live edge and the tree sitting on a slab that is live edge, this becomes really compromising, a duplication of elements, both pieces of the display sitting at the same height on the table, and in fact, that jita is even more dominant. So I wanna start out this discussion by beginning with our list of priorities and starting to fix the stand that holds the tree to accomplish a better visible viewing height. And if we can start there, then I think we can probably work into an appropriate grass or stakusa, uh, an appropriate jita, and find a display that does to a very significant degree maximize the ability to create a show-worthy composition for this tree, okay? So first things first, we recognize this is not right. Before I even talk about that, I gotta fix, I gotta fix all this, right? I gotta fix my height. So bear with me for just a second. Okay, and, and this is why, also why I wanted to do it slow because we have multiple options here. Uh, but if I went with a smaller than powerful tree, then the context of the dialogue starts to be lost a little bit. So I wanted a big tree, but I have to physically move it myself. Right Now, the, the Jita that it was on was nice. The Jita that it was on was, was really nice. It's an Austin Heisman piece, actually. Uh, really beautiful, it's got a bow tie, shows a lot of beautiful craft. Okay, it was too low. Now, when I move to something like this, right, and I'm gonna put the tree on this, I think. Okay, and as long as you unweight the tree, now watch closely. Okay, I'm gonna slide my hands underneath the pot. I'm gonna crank on my forearms, and that takes all the weight off of the feet so that I can move it and it does not dig into the stand. Okay, this is exactly that moment where we're like, holy cow, I mean literally to the degree that the legs are bowing just slightly, stand build. Okay, now when I stand here, now, when I start to say, hey, I don't want to be looking up, I want to see this or this at level right here, well, my eye height is now right here, right here, okay? Almost right in there. So I'm looking up underneath, I'm seeing all the wire, I'm seeing all the work. Now, I do get the base, which I love, but notice how thin the legs are here. The, the, the legs are very, very weak. And notice how weak the top of this is, how thin that is, and the negative space that's here. And you start to look at this and you start to say, what type of tree would sit on this stand? Because it feels 
so incredibly weak and light. Yeah, this is a beautiful stand for an expansive Japanese maple that has a low height, wide lateral spread. Nice strong trunk, airy branches of Japanese maple without foyer mass. This is a perfect kokufu table for a Japanese maple or a deciduous tree out of leaf that has that spacious airy branching. Because we have that negative space, that slenderness and that really nice delicate leg, nice little piece right here, nice little kick in, okay? Definitely not the stand too high. My height is very over exaggerated, but the physical weight and capacity for this to visually fill that necessity of mass to meet the tree where it's at, definitely underserving. okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, again, I'm gonna unweight, okay? I liked the darker brown of that last stand. And this is where, as we were starting to select, as I was looking at stands to select, I was like, boy, the brown on that one, and let me just bring it back for comparison, because color-wise, when you talk about that age, right, this is where we start to see, okay? Notice this. Lonnie, can you get a close-up, right? Okay, notice the difference here, because this is a much more massive table right here. That thickness, the legs, very short to the ground, limited negative space, but that lightness, definitely lightens it up a little bit, pulls a little more visual demand out of this. It's not so light that I would say this is a spring stand or it's off limits, but this is light enough that Mr. Kimura would have taken a lead-based uh, oil solution and changed the tone of this to a much darker tone for the Coke Fu. This is right in the wheelhouse, right? There's a little bit of reddish, primarily chocolatey brown with a little reddish hue in this. This is really kind of the wheelhouse for fundamental show display, okay? But if you're talking about, well, the stand's gonna fall apart or doesn't visually have the capacity to hold, you have to have physical and visual and the height is the priority. <clears throat> okay, so we're just utilizing best, best that we have. Really leverage those forearms. See this, I can pick that whole tree up just by using my forearms allows us to save our stance. Oh. oh, height, nailed it, nailed it. Okay, now we see, now we see the mass of that bottom piece meeting the Ponderosa where it's at, the legs capable of holding it. I would say the lateral width of the stand and the space that we have, slightly towards the back, let me even that out. Okay, and oftentimes we will fudge on the front to reduce the amount of space here, maybe even lopsided so that the back has more space to shrink down that mass of the rim of wood as it shows the tree, okay? So just pulling that forward makes a, a, a little bit of a difference, diluting that. Okay, and you see now, when I'm standing here and I'm viewing this tree, now I'm looking right here. Now my height is right here. So I can't see up into the guts necessarily, and I can still see the base from that perspective. I see right here, past this, into the base of the tree. I see everything that's happening. And even from a very short distance here, right, I'm only three, four feet away, I can see the entire tree. I can see it, I see the base, I don't see the guts. I'm at that appropriate viewing level, okay? Do I want this to be a little bit darker? Definitely, right? Definitely do. And what we see in display a lot of time is that we don't necessarily have perfection, but we're very close. The tree is at the right height. The, 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 the physical mass is correct for it. And all of a sudden we're saying, okay, maybe not the perfect color, something I can aspire to. I can use this as a template. I can, uh, you know, sort of keep my eye out for that perfect piece. But for now, this will, this will be the best possible solution that we have, okay? So now that we've accomplished the two biggies, right? Height and mass, let's turn our attention to this. Because now we have height that starts to help formulate what type of a shtakusa would we like? And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take away both of these because the shtakusa is gonna dictate the size of the jita. So let me get rid of this. And I'm gonna put a few options up here 
and we're going to see how they play with the tree in terms of the mass and our interpretation of them, okay? Okay, let's start with that one. Okay, not bad, not bad, but not great, right? It's, it's, it's okay, it's not gigantic, but it's a little bit big. Do you get that feeling? It's like, wow, that's, that's big. And then if you put a divider here, maybe you even have to cram this in a little bit more in most show settings. This is a little bit wider. This is almost seven feet. I think you, you definitely don't get this much, okay? You cram that together and you start to say, you know, does the Stokusa come up front of this? little bit slightly towards the front. You definitely don't want it in the middle here so that it's linear. So you bring this up here. Maybe you pull the tree back a little bit and you start to say, well, that definitely orientation-wise improves. It's nice because this grass with these pieces does have a little bit of an orientation that way. You've got the lean of the highest point showing some seasonality. Most people say, why wouldn't you cut that? That might be the seasonal insinuation, right? So we have that flow. There's an interesting interaction, but it's big. It is big. Let's see if we can find something a little bit better. Okay, don't judge. I didn't get to clean this one up. Hey, what about here? It's nice. Okay, again, you see that verticality. The verticality immediately kills it. The verticality, this relationship, when you start messing with this business, game over right? Game over in terms of its relationship to the display. I'm going to go slightly, just slightly, slightly ahead of that foot so that my pot, you know, when you look from the side, my pot just sits slightly ahead of that foot. It's not in line. That would be in line. Notice how that creates that kind of two-dimensionality. You can't even see depth in the camera right now, but you can see the difference between that and that. A few inches, Monumental difference in terms of display and orientation, right? But that verticality not working. Let's do away with that. Okay, and I'm going to come back to just a piece that we've used quite a bit. Young Cho created this piece, actually on the live stream, if you want to see Kusumono creation. I know she's an outspoken critic of my Kusumono maintenance. That's okay. We're getting better. Okay, I think this starts to strike the tone. A really beautiful, really beautiful size. Notice that the verticality just barely increases or uh, exceeds the stand of the tree, okay? I'm gonna go with a super low one. Tell me what you think of this. Okay, this is also just at the peak, at the peak of display right now, okay? This is interesting too. This, for the height of the tree, feels a little too low for me. Feels a little bit too low. I feel like the tree would need to be more vertically compressed in order to work with this. Okay, and we're talking about a matter of a small degree of flowering elements that change the entire feel. Now watch closely, okay, here. See, you see, you see, you see. Let me get the shadow off the wall, good. Okay, now watch. Nice, nice change, okay? If this were in a show, I would slide that stand over a little bit. I would use the entirety of the space. I would occupy this, okay? But I think that's your best, I think that's your best accent piece for this particular tree, for the size, for the orientation. Now, orientation, we have a slight lean this way, highest point of the pot here, moving there, leaning there, high point there. Now, if this high point were over here, it would be even better. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Let me go ahead and play with that orientation. Now notice how disruptive this is. Notice how disruptive that is for the, 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 the shtakusa to be angled this way, right? All of a sudden, the tree, the tree's like, hey, and the shtakusa's like, bye, right? And, all, and, and we lose it. The relationship is gone. So we say, okay, cool. Let's go here. Let's go there. Let's allow those two pieces to really work together. And we suddenly pull it back. Okay, good, cool, I like this. I like where we're at. I like what's happening here. Let's go ahead, let's play some games, okay? The Jita, the Jita, all right? Let's see what we have here. 
I'm gonna go with a rectangular G10, nice dark color. Contrasts well with the red so that we don't get that synonymous color. That's good. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, except for, do you not notice or do you not lock into the rectangular form of the stand, the rectangular form of the Jita? The change of color is wonderful. Change of color is wonderful. But that, that continuation, that dupli duplication of the pattern, rectangle to rectangle, does have some limiting factor to the quality of the aesthetic, right? And I've got, a, I've got other rectangles here, but I think just in that one uh, example uh, that we've kind of seen where that doesn't necessarily work. Now, I have an interesting Austin Heitzman piece again here, and this one also has some directional insinuation. Let's see how that looks. Okay, this is interesting to me. This gives us a little bit more, I like that, that detail shot right there. That's beautiful. Notice how that gives us further insinuation of direction, okay? Now, when you pull back out, you still see these hard edges right here. I think it could work. I don't think that this is terrible, but I think the light color of this Jita is a very seasonally insinuate, uh, uh, seasonally demonstrative component of display and contextually for our standard show model. I don't necessarily know that you want people paying as much attention to that light color in a composition of very dark colors, old antiquity as the focal point of most bonsai displays, particularly in the conifer range, darker stand, lighter Jita, all of a sudden you start paying attention to that, okay? So let's mix it up then. Let's take away these rectangular pieces and let's start talking about live edge or some irregular forms. Okay, and this is where it gets fun. Because now all of a sudden we can really start to play. And just in mixing up, now notice the irregularity there, the irregularity of the Jita to the strict line of the rectangle, and suddenly you start to have this little bit of mag magic, okay? Now I'm gonna play with now orientation again. I'm gonna, or not orientation, but positioning again. I'm gonna pull this back. Loses something, loses something, lost a lot, became very linear, okay? And I'm gonna push it forward. Gained something, gained a lot, right? These are immediate, boom, visually. Yes, that's better. Why is it better? How do we quantify that? You took away the two dimension. You took away the linear layout. You gave depth to the composition. This is what we talk about in selection of front, right? Changing the spacing between positive and negative. This is the difference of form or the repetition of theme, right? Or the utilization of space and mass and color and all of these things. It's all the same dialogue. We just have to know how to use it in terms of display, okay? Now, I don't know when I lift this, and can we go back to the detail, Josh? When I lift this, you need to ask yourself, what direction? Is the Jita coming in this direction or is the Jita moving back towards the tree? I'm gonna say the Jita is moving away from the display, okay? And I wanna be very cognizant of that. Now, I think this is subjective to a degree. Some of you at home might be saying, ooh, I disagree. Some of you at home might be saying the pine, I disagree with its orientation too. That's fine, right? For the, for the sake of it, the asymmetrical flow of the branches is moving to the right, the apex, just let it ride for the time being, okay? Let's see if we can find a much more obvious demonstration, okay? This is definitively moving back to the left. Now let's take a look. Ooh, interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, go to the wide. Yes, I like this. I like this. Again, and let me just see. Okay. Let me just see if I can. Not what you want to do with a tree on a stand because you can rip the legs right off a stand. This is how much I love you guys and how much I want us to understand this. Okay, better use of space there, right? This is nice. This is nice. A okay, tree, well held, stand massive enough to support the visual weight of the tree, viewing distance in person, the camera's back a little bit farther so you get that wider perspective, right? The shtaksa oriented towards the tree, the jita oriented towards the tree. Only criticism I would, I would make, color of the jita, color of the stand. 
starting to share a similar value. And you start to say, geez, Louise, for Pete's sake, Ryan, this is obnoxious. Yes, yes it is. To pursue display, to pursue the best visual representation of that tree in the traditional context of the show model is a painstaking effort, right? This is where you make this tree look the best comes with the manipulation of all of these elements and mixing and matching and maybe taking this and stripping the finish off of it and darkening the color and refinishing it so that it fits your need and the color works and the Jita now doesn't have a similarity. That is the degree to which display is pursued when you're doing bonsai at the highest level, right? Do you want to pursue it at that level? No judgment there if you don't. But that is the professional level, right? So to go through all of this and to be very objective about it and say, yes, now I am sharing color values. Maybe that's not the right move. Maybe we go with another piece here. Let's take a look. Let's keep digging, okay? I'm going to go with a browner tint. I'm going to get away from that red. How is that? This is nice. This is quite nice. I'm not upset by that. I don't have any issue with that. Maybe that is the best middle ground, right? And if we come back and we change the stand, the Jita would probably change again, okay? But just in that small analysis of the selection of the stand, of the orientation of the Shtaksa with the stand, of the selection of the Jita as it relates to the tree in the stand, we've kind of worked through a lot of thematics about display that allow us to further understand, ooh, what am I doing? What am I focused on? Where do I start? And how do I really get the best out of my tree when I'm presenting it in a show exhibition kind of scenario, okay? So this is the ponderosa pine. Now I have a deciduous tree as well. And I think we have enough time. Do you know what time it is? I got, a, I got it right here. Six, yes, we've got time, okay. Let's move on to the deciduous because I think the deciduous gives us some other criteria and opportunities to play with design. Okay, now, this is a very, very common scene in a Western bonsai show, okay? Mainly because, mainly because we probably don't have a significant variety of elements to be selecting from, right? And I think it needs to be said, first and foremost, that although this stand is beautiful, this style, right? This is a very low slung stand with very thin, delicate legs, right? Which means it's meant to hold a very tall, slender object. This is not a bonsai stand. It's never been a bonsai stand. It will never be a bonsai stand. And it doesn't really have much function in the bonsai realm. This is an Ikebana stand. This is a flower display stand for the home alcove, for the enjoyment, for smaller objects to be placed on it. And we do see these repurposed a lot. People go to Japan, they go to an antique store, they see these, they say bonsai display, right? Just the simple thinness of the legs, the low height, you would see these legs on a nice, tall, slender, chuhin size stand. You would see the size of this elevated to this height to be really meeting that tree where it's at in terms of that medium size. This is not necessarily a piece that has much function and purpose. And so I put it up here. But I also put it up here just to simply speak to the fact that a stand has to give the tree room. All right, for as much as we constrict the container and try to show that tree as powerful or decrease the root mass to foliar mass and show this impossibility of bonsai, which it is impossible, we're always swimming upstream, okay? Once we get to the display, we want people to be comfortable if you're considering the standard Kokufu show model. You want the tree to look good. You don't want it to be overwhelmed. You don't want it to be underserved. And this means we have a little bit of elasticity or fudge room inside that, but this is definitely too small, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move this over here, okay? We're gonna recognize that piece right there, probably something if you own it that you should get into Ikebana to use it or sell it. This is probably not gonna function as a bonsai stand at the higher level. If you love it, don't let me tell you that it's not worthy of being utilized in bonsai. Don't let me do that, 
Okay, if you love it, love it. Okay, I'm gonna move to the polar opposite. Polar opposite, okay? Now all of a sudden, and you'll see this from time to time in a Kung Fu, you'll see this tree and you'll see this massive stand in the, in the photo book and you're saying, how did they pick that stand out for that tree? Well, oftentimes when the photography for the Kung Fu is done, the stands that are brought are not the stands for the specific tree, but a universal stand for all the trees that owner has because they have to pack up the stands and the trees to take them home. So we would have one stand be shot for anywhere from 10 to 12 trees at Mr. Kimura's garden. Subsequently, we only had to bring roughly 15 to 20 stands instead of 80 stands, and that's what allowed us to survive. But this is a stand that is a very deciduous centric stand, okay? Because we have a thin top, relatively thin legs, a really beautiful, nice detail, and we've got all of the negative space that's created through these pieces right here. Very wonderfully crafted, very beautifully executed. Notice the color slightly lighter, slightly lighter. Again, deciduous, open the door to a little bit more of that lightness, that visual feel, not being as heavy, not being as old. Slight insinuation of newness, but I would not consider this to be a light color. It's lighter than what we deem the conifer ideal color would have been, okay? But we see so much space here. Right, and it's not bad. It's not bad in the same way that there was sort of the stand that held the pine that the color was good, but the height was wrong and the legs were too thin. It's just a little bit massive, right? But a very beautiful, and I would say a very consistent stand and traditional display in an exhibition for deciduous trees based on the lightness as well as the intricacy. If you think about the ramification space, similarities. I don't know if that's what led to these dowels being utilized, but there's some, some synchronicity there. Okay, and let's see if we can get into the realm of maybe a little bit more proportion. Now, the one thing about that stand, its width was a little bit overslung, but its height was nice, right? The height was nice. Where the tree was, and some of you might be saying, gosh, I didn't think I would ever display my tree at this height. Well, again, you gotta know the surface. You gotta know where you're trying to orient people's attention. And I obviously think this is the best one because I'm gonna go through the whole shindig here. Okay, right? And now when we orient my perspective, right here, this is my eye level that I'm seeing at. I love this. I love this. I love this. Okay, I think the height is great. I think the color is great. How could we improve it? This feels a little heavy, doesn't it? It feels just a little thick. The tree is relatively slender. It's old. That doesn't have any impact on whether the mass is there or not. This mass just feels a little too heavy. Gosh, even to just come up and cut out, you know, a half inch of that, which I'm not saying you should do, but I'm saying that would be an adjustment to the ideal stand for this tree, could just make this the absolute perfect selection. I like the slightly lighter color with the pear, just starting to give a little bit of a, a fall color insinuation, right? If we were having something like an Irodori, which is a full fall color exhibition in Japan at the Green Club, this would be almost right in line, a few more cold nights, you stick it in there and you'd boom, fall color would explode. But I think that's a nice height. I think that's a nice width, we've got plenty. Plenty of width here, right? And you say, how much width do you want? Well, that depends. That depends. Is the tree a vertical tree where we want to squeeze in? Or is the tree compact and we want to give that elongation out? These, this is where we have to kind of give and take visually. I feel like it could have a little bit more width. I feel like the other stand was a little bit too big, but I like the lightness of the other stand compared to the thickness here. And inside of this, we see two different aesthetics. I still think this is the best piece to display the tree. Okay, let's come back. Now let's start to deal with the display pieces. Okay, let's just start with that piece right there, okay? Again, the verticality, the verticality entering the space, the verticality breaking the edge of the stand, I'm okay with a little bit of that, I'm okay, right? We fudged on that with the pine, it worked. The pine's container was very deep. This is a very shallow container. Now we start to see, ooh, 
let's not go too far. Let's not be too aggressive, okay? Let me go ahead, let me pull in sort of the last piece that we had. Let's see how this works here, okay? Now, with the pine, this felt nice. This felt dainty. This felt just right, slightly lower than meeting the tree where it's at. This is an accent piece. This is an understory. This is trying to give seasonality, context, environment, etc. And in the show model, it doesn't matter. It's just mass, right? Let me set this piece down. I'm just kind of rocking out with this in my hands. I feel like I'm carrying groceries, talking to a friend, okay? But now all of a sudden, this is massive. The trunk of this tree is slender, right? More delicate, and all of a sudden, this feels big and bulky and kind of hulking out on us a little bit. So let's see what happens, okay? And the other thing I would say is you can't fight orientation. I mean, it is clearly, this piece wants to move this way. It just wants to move this way. You can't fight that. It's still moving this way. Let's come back to this piece. Okay, nice, nice. We're still fighting orientation. I'm gonna say the natural orientation for this piece is here. High side in the back. This is higher in the back, lower in the front. Gives us that full frontal exposure. We have the moss here, leaning here. If I try to just flirt with that, people are gonna say, well, you tried to make that serve. Still massive, still a little massive, still a little visually heavy. The mass of this container dwarfs the shallowness, okay? Let's keep going. Let's see what we have here. What about that? What about that? That feels nice. Finally, finally we're not looking at how big the container of the Stakusa is or how overwhelming the size of the canopy of the Stakusa is. Finally, we're looking at how the two relate. Orientation-wise, Really beautiful, high side here, low side there. That verticality, slightly offset to this side, leaning this way to get that asymmetrical push to the right. I like this. I like the balance of that. I like where my eye is at here. I like the fact that this doesn't break that boundary. I like the fact that this is less massive than that. That it is a subservient piece that accentuates the design, okay? This is fundamental show display, okay? And now with that, we get to step back into the Jita. And here is where I think we should play a little bit. I think we should play a little bit because I don't necessarily know that we need to so rigidly adhere. Let's try the rectangle first, okay? Rectangle, caramel values, a little bit darker, okay? We have that analogy of shape and form. Oof, somehow we just lost something. You see that? You see how, the, see how immediately we have that duplicity of, of rectangular shape? It just, oh, doggone it, we lost something. Let's see if we can play with the rectangular shape with the Austin Heitzman piece that gives direction. Definitely lighter, a little bit more of a similar palette of color to the stand that it's on now. And again, we lose something. We lose something. Notice the caramel caramel even a light, almost like a, uh, almost like a uh, brown sugar kind of a vibe there, right? And you've got that lightness on both sides, doesn't work anymore, okay? Okay, let's, instead of going lighter, let's go darker, let's take the rectangular and let's offset the rectangular. Let's see if we can stagger rectangular and give rise to some asymmetrical push. Let me get these out of the way, sorry. Okay, this is, this is nice. This is interesting. Okay, let me show you this, stay in the detail. Just staggered rectangles. And you can even do this, if you have two rectangles, you can even do this on your own. Just in terms of, you know, not with this piece obviously, a bigger piece, but you can stagger on your own. You don't have to have something that's made this way. I'll show you, Mr. Kimura, we made these at Mr. Kimura's. Those are taped together. Just to have some new utilization of traditional models. Okay, this is nice. The color is nice. The color offset is nice. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. But let's go ahead and let's keep working. Because one thing that I recognize about this is that the thickness here 
right? And, and trying to have delicacy there. Can we go a little bit thinner and a little bit different color profile? I'm gonna go to the natural edge now. Okay, this is nice. Now you've got red, you've got a reddish hue to the Gita, you've got an irregularity to it, and you've got that real geometric rectangular form, slightly lighter color, the height is there, right? The Stakusa has the orientation towards the right, the pair towards the left, kind of all factors combining to really give us, I think probably the best rendition of this display. Now we recognize, hey, if I had to make a choice, I would like to lighten that a little bit. And if I had to make a choice, you know, I might change the size of the Gita just a little bit. It feels a little bit, and when I pick this up, you'll recognize it doesn't have a lot of front to back depth. We're fudging on the front just a little bit, right? There's always something that we can do better that's increasing our engagement with the display of our trees. But hopefully what you recognize is there is a thought process. There are formalities that when you start to look at them, are there for a reason, because they do historically give rise to a higher aesthetic and a visibility of the tree, which is always the focal point of the Kok Fu model of traditional show display, right? No matter which way you hack it, the design is to show the tree and each consideration, whether it's the height, whether it's the mass, whether it's the color, whether it's the orientation, right? All of those things are pushing you in that direction of tree looking better, tree looking the, as the focal point, tree being the center of our attention. And that, again, is only one way of thinking about display, but it typically is the methodology that you see replicated across the world, and now you have the backbone of information, knowledge, and the ability to look at your compositions and say, why doesn't this look good? Or how could this look better? Just based on the fundamental principles. This is a great initial discussion, getting to see all of these thrown at you and discussed from a high level perspective. It's a great beginning to being able to start conceptualizing and executing display to make your tree look its very best. And I'm really, really happy we got to do this tonight. I've been thinking about this for a long time. Anyways, thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come back to this video for reference if you need to, to understand where you jump off from. And if your innovative displays don't go as planned, you can always come home, right? This is always a foundation of display that will never be wrong and your tree will always look brilliant when you apply these concepts correctly to really abide by that elevation of the tree as the central aesthetic model and focal point of display. Thank you all for the support. We love you very much. We couldn't do this without you. And we will see you when we see you. Mwah!